since the government's been printing press, been printing money like it's nothing, your money that you have in your checking account, your savings, is getting to be worth less and less and less. One billion dollars. Welcome back to the Fish and Coach Show. My name is Brandon Fisher. This is Coach Ratner. And today we're talking about why a billion dollars is just not what it used to be. That's right. That's right. You know, if you had asked me seven, eight years ago, would there ever be a trillion dollar company? And I would have said, no way. No way Amazon's a trillion dollars. No way Apple's a trillion. I just couldn't see that figure. How many zeros is that, Coach? It's, uh, well, a bit, well, a million is six zeros. Is that right? Six, We're talking not, 12 zeros right now. That's just hard to conceptualize. That's a lot of you zeros. Know, remember when you were young, I mean, not you, but like for me, like the idea of $100 was a lot of money because you could buy a candy bar for 25 cents, whatever, and Cokes for 25 cents. I don't think machines. I ever lived in that era. No, no. And, and uh, I mean, I remember I used to work at a bank. Quarters were a big deal. Wow. Quarters, th- back in the 80s, the biggest transaction I had as a bank teller was $10 for a roll of quarters. People write $10 checks to have a roll of quarters because you had to have quarters for the machines and for the toll booths and for pay phone. Remember the pay phone? Pay phone. Isn't it funny? My son jokes about them. Like, wow. You know, and toll booths that you have to physically pay. I mean, at the airport, they had a line of like 30 phone booths and people were waiting to <laughs> use the phone to call someone. I only know from the movie Airplane. Oh, that's a funny a movie. white courtesy phone. Yeah. So, um, so as I got older and money changed, as I, I looked at money, like then a thousand dollars became a big deal, and ten thousand. And then eventually, one time, I remember I was, you know, hundred thousand dollars. I was a rare coin dealer, so I'm doing lots of business, and hundred thousand dollars, like I'll do lots of deals on hundred thousand dollars for one piece of co- one coin. Sometimes one coin, but sometimes a group of coins. And then I was, I remember one time, uh, Heritage Gallery, Heritage Auctions, which is the third largest auction house in the country next to Christie's and Sotheby's in New York, okay. uh, they needed to borrow money. So they called me because they, they know I spent enough cash, and they said, we need to borrow a million dollars. And I happened to have a million bucks at the time. Wow. And I, it was all my money. It was everything I had. And I loaned them a million dollars. Do you know why I did it? No. Why my did you my do that? ego. So I can say I loaned Heritage a million dollars. Uh, that was a big deal for me just to be able to do that. I, I mean, bet people were impressed. They were very impressed <laughs> with me. They thought I was the big shot. It was funny. So uh, they... Um, Every time I come to see them, they always pick me up in like a sedan, like a limo. It was very nice. They treated uh-huh. me. They were great. Loved the company. Anyway, so a million dollars is a lot of money. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money to anyone right now. It, sure really, is. it really is. So now you have companies that are going public worth $3 billion, $4 billion, $10 billion, $30 billion. It's crazy. I wow. mean, you know, Airbnb coming public at like $100 billion. These numbers are hard to imagine. Wow. Forget a trillion dollars. Now we have... Tesla just went over a trillion dollars in valuation. How many companies right now do you know that are, are over a, a trillion dollars? Well, I think there's a- a- Apple and Amazon and Tesla. Facebook might have almost made a million trillion dollars. Yeah. I'm probably forgetting something else. Google, for sure. Google. They're all over. They're all over a trillion dollars. Just two years ago, so Apple th- became the first, and it was it was like that four minute. I don't mile. know if it was Apple or them, but it was probably Apple. I think it was but, Apple. So my the reason why we're discussing this, and the reason why this is so important, because money is changing. Since Corona, since the government's been printing press, been printing money like it's nothing, they're stealing. I don't want to talk back to the government on TV or or a podcast, but like your money that you have in your checking account, your savings is getting to be worth less and less and less. And I remember when I was little, my father we used to live in Old Town Alexandria or near it. My my Old Town Alexandria has a lot of. Really cool old houses. It's a very cool area. It's very Beautiful cool like, place. Oh, that's right. You're from the D.C. area. That's I keep right. Forgetting. So uh, my sister said to my father, Dad, how much can we, can we buy a townhouse in Old Town? Like my father said, this is the 1970s. He said, oh, no. They cost at least twenty five, thirty five thousand dollars $35,000 a piece. Now they're like $2 million a piece. <laughs> and I'm telling you, in five or 10 years, they're going to be three, four, five, six, seven million dollars $7,000,000. The value of money is changing. And it's hard to conceptualize when you like, you know, look at, a gallon of milk, I don't know what it costs, 78 bucks, whatever it costs. And like, this could never be $20. This could never be $20. What's going to be? That is so scary. It's like, very what, scary. What do we do? To Milk's re- going to be 50 bucks. How do we prepare for that? The one way to prepare for it is to get out of cash and into something that is, it could be a hedge against inflation. Now, people are going to say, oh, Bitcoin, gold, there's different things. And I love gold. I don't love Bitcoin. I have reasons against it, which we're not going to get into now. But it is a hedge. But everything's a hedge. Your shirt's a hedge. This cup's a hedge. Everything's a hedge. Anything you buy. But I believe you need to be into like either real estate, 
you can say Bitcoin, although I don't love it, but gold, gold's another thing, but something, and my favorite, which would be uh, tech tech companies that are that are changing the way the business is done, that are digital, and I and I think you're going to see a lot more. You know, the reason why this is called why a billion dollars isn't what it used to be is because now you're going to see a lot of these ten billion dollar companies, five and ten billion dollar companies. I think within the next five ten years, some some of them will be worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Coach, let's talk about technology companies for a little bit. I'm I'm curious. What's the potential that you see within these companies, not just in their growth potential based on these numbers that are out, outrageous, but what does the world look like with these tech companies? Where do they fit in? Well, the, the, where, where's the value coming from? The value is coming from building platforms that no one else can replicate. For mm -hmm. example, Airbnb came public, $100 billion. Now, it's a high valuation. But I love the platform. Have you gone to Airbnb? It's a great platform. It's an unbelievable platform. They have seven, like seven million users on it. No one else is going to come and build a platform that's going to compete with them. They are out first, first mover advantage. It's their customer is the entire world. Now, there are some downsides to this: the fact that you have some cities that are going to limit how much Airbnb is going to be used because they're go, they're fighting with the hotels. Right. But I believe that in the long run, that efficiencies will win out. Uber is going to win out. Lyft's going to win out. Airbnb is going to Airbnb is going to win out, and that the politicians who are signing these into laws that are limiting the growth of these companies are going to vote it out. Wow. I, just think, I just think efficiencies take over. You know, like Airbnb is worth more than the top, than like Sheraton, Hilton, Marriott. I think it's worth four times what Marriott is worth. Right I, I don't know, but like, and they don't own a hotel room. They don't Because they have hotel. a software platform. That's what technology is. It's about a software platform where generally the entire world is a customer. Fascinating. It That's is fascinating. fascinating. And, and you see the growth of some of these companies. Like they have a certain amount of growth. Like Pinterest has a certain amount of growth in America. And they, you know, they make maybe, I don't know what how much they make per customer in America. Maybe it's $1.50. But in Europe, it might be 17 cents. But next year, it's 21 cents. And, and it's going to keep growing. It's going to keep mm -hmm. growing, keep growing. So I'm wondering, what's the equivalent of owning real estate, which is a physical piece of land in the tech world? In the t Well, I love real estate. But real estate is different because you have to manage it. And depending what you're, you have to know a lot. The mm -hmm. guys that make the most money in real estate, as far as let's say, residential or maybe even some small commercial, are the guys who know how to build. Mm -hmm. I tell people who are going into real estate, you know, I teach students who are 19, 20, 21 years old, you got to know certain things. It's good to know how to like to change a light switch or how to change a the minor plumbing, the little things like that. Because when you go into a property you're going to buy, most of the time you're going to do you're going to renovate a property and you. It's very easy to get taken advantage of. I mean, it's so right. easy that people think they can buy a piece of real estate, hire a contractor, not visit it, not worry about it, and then they'll be able to rent it and make money. It's very difficult. It's not that easy. It's the guys who know what they're doing. Like anything in the world, the more knowledge you have, the more wisdom you have, which, by the way, is why we're doing the show. Right. Right? We want to give over our wisdom to you, the public. We want all our wisdom from our brain into you. So... The more knowledge you have in real estate, the more you're going to make. But if you don't have that knowledge, you're not. If you're not in building, the people who become get in real estate usually builders right. or contractors who like, oh, there's a house for sale. I built the one next door for this other guy. I can buy this one for 120,000. You'll put forty thousand dollars into it and get two seventy-five. Right. And then then they go and jump into it. And next thing you know, they're into real estate. So it sounds like it's good to invest in what you know and whatever you whatever you're investing in. You should learn a lot about. For sure, you should invest in companies unless you know about, a lot about them. For mm -hmm. example, you ever been, have you ever, anyone give you a stock tip ever? Um, of course, right? People all the time they give you like, a stock. Yeah. You got you know, people at work, you know, like whatever it is, and you buy the stock, and the next day it goes up. How do you feel? You feel great. You feel like a million bucks. You feel like look at me. You feel like you're worth that. I, I that know increase. what I'm doing. It was all me. I know what I'm doing. You have no idea what you're doing. Someone told you about something. You bought it. It happened to go up the next day. This is what happened with GameStop just a few months ago. Well, GameStop was a, a, diff it's a different game. <laughs> I mean, that was just a bunch of people put Reddit pushing to, 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 to get the short people out, and it was it was an artificial inflation of a right. stock. That's a game, not investing. Uh -huh. I like to invest in companies that have growth. Well, I see... Like a you, like an air, like an airport, you see a runway, and you know some of these airports have really long runways because they have big planes flying, like Airbus 380s and stuff. I want to see a big runway for growth. I want to see 
a software platform that's not replaceable or hard to replace, like something like uh, uh, we talked about Airbnb and, and Pinterest. And, and I'd like to see... You're looking for a unique selling point. I'm looking for a unique selling point or a product that no one else has mm-hmm. or owners that are invested and started from day one and who are growing, who are building for growth for the future. They don't care about profits today because it used to be there wasn't a lot of money around in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And if you had a company... You had to start making money pretty quickly else you were out the door. But now right. there's so much money around because a billion dollars is what it used to be. If there's so much money around that people will chase, we will people will chase potential growth. Rabbi Polotnik told uh, told me that he looks for a company. He was speaking to an investor yeah. who looks for a company that has a CEO who's going to stay up all night if there's a problem and fix it for months at a time. Yeah, he looks for. Uh, a leadership core that's going to put the time and energy to make their product the best possible. That's right. Now you invest in that and you know about the company. Yeah. So, shape. so the idea I want to get across is that I believe a lot of companies today that you think are overvalued are going to keep being overvalued. I mean, like back when you know, Amazon was worth 150, 200 billion dollars, which is still a lot of money. And they were losing, I don't know, billions of dollars a year. I'm like, how can something, I remember I was going to short it, which means I was going to, Right. Bet against it going I'm glad you didn't up. do that. No, I didn't do it. Wow. I'm glad I didn't. That that how can the company because I didn't have the I didn't my mind wasn't wrapped around how the whole market works and how investing works. Now I, I feel like I have a clue what I'm doing, even though I really have no clue. But I think I do. Anyway, so, well see I do in a few years because you know I'm you know I'm I'm coming to the book very soon, only called Score, Mastering Wisdom. So excited for this book. I know mastering it's got great stuff in it. Mastering wisdom, wealth, and happiness. It's kind of like everything put together. And I go through the stocks that I own and why I own some of them and why certain companies like – like I love Starbucks. I'm, I, I'd love to have a Starbucks right now actually. And, uh, but I wouldn't invest in the company. It's a great company, but I wouldn't invest in it. I love Apple and Google. I'm not going to invest in them because I want to go from – personally, when I invest, I want to have a chance to make 10, 50, 100 times my money. Which means that there's a lot of risk as well. There is risk, but I'm going to spread it out to 25, 50 different mm-hmm. stocks. That's what I do. You just need one of them to make it. I pay. just need one of them to, I, you know, one or two to, to hit off, and that's my goals when I'm when I'm investing in companies. And I try to see, you know, when I was in the coin dealer, I was a coin dealer. My job was to see the potential in something else, and the more potential I see, the more I was willing to pay for that for that risk. Uh, more more willing I was willing to risk. Now I lost money many times, but a very important idea is that when you invest in a company or invest in anything, what's the if you have limited liability, if you don't say invest in the stock market, what's the most you can lose in your investment? Whatever you put in. Right. You, lie, you buy stock for $10,000, you lose $10,000. What's the most you can make? Um, it's really unlimited. It's unlimited. It's unlimited. I mean, I bought Tesla. I was at a board meeting back in 2013, and one of our board members had a Tesla car, and he just bought it. I went and looked at it. I was so blown away. I was so blown away. I'm going to go buy some Tesla stock. So I wasn't really investing in stocks since so I bought like, I think, 100 shares for 30 bucks a piece. Wow. Yeah. I, I, sold, I sold finally, I sold half after with the $200 a share. I got my money back plus okay. profit. I kept the 50 shares until like went to like 2400 Wow. before the split. Wow. It's wow. doubled since then. Tesla has doubled since I sold it last November. Oh, and the man. reason why I sold it, because I thought it was valuation, I think, of 500 million, 500 billion. It's now a trillion. Is that I thought there's other companies I could buy like Cloudflare and like CrowdStrike, who had a lot more potential than Tesla to double, triple, and quadruple in value. Wow. So that's what I did. I try to look for companies that way. And because a billion dollars is not what it used to be. It really is. So sad. I used to watch Who Wants to Be, an, Who Wants to be a Millionaire. I know. And I'm like, whoa, I can't even imagine what yeah. you do with so much money. Yeah. But uh, Who Wants to Be a Trillionaire? Wow. Yeah, well, a billionaire. You know, it's funny, and, and I, I don't remember exactly, but... Uh, in the 1980s, I believe, in order to get the Forbes, was the Forbes 400, I believe, the Forbes, the, the top number was like $2 billion mm-hmm. in the early 80s. Now, just to get on the list, it's $2 billion. Just to get on the list. Just to get on the list. Wow. Yeah. So the numbers that keep changing, the value, if you own a house that's worth half a million dollars, keep it. It's going to be worth millions of dollars someday. Now, of course, Milk's going to be 50 bucks a gallon, but the idea is if you're in cash, if you're in safe investments like bonds, you're going to get crushed. Am I going to be right or wrong? I have no idea. I'm just keeping my opinion, but I think you're going to get crushed, crushed personally, and I'm not keeping any cash if I can. I mean, wow. you, can even, you can buy Bitcoin, although I don't 
like Bitcoin because the valuation of Bitcoin is only being held up by what someone else thinks it's worth. Which the whole this is a very different show. There's different so much show, to say right? I, I, I can get into gold. We're getting the gold. We can get like the doomsday gift basket. Different ideas that I put in my book. But anyway, for now, be responsible with your money. Right. Take the risks. Get it out of cash. Yes. And and good luck. Thanks for watching the Fish and Coach Show. I'm Brandon Fisher. This is Coach Ratner. I'll see you next time.